a big issue facing theaters today is that by and large, the younger generations aren't coming. The current generation of theater goers are beginning to be unable to attend due to reasons caused by age, such as mobility, illness, and death. <laughs> this older generation has been trying to hand off the baton to the next generation of possible theater goers, but the younger generation hasn't been picking up that baton, and we are seeing that through the decline of ticket sales. As a professional theater artist and an elder of the millennial generation, I had a moment of clarity. <laughs> I had a moment of clarity about 10 years ago that changed the course of my career. In thinking about my generation, I started to wonder, are the millennials wrong or are they just different? I felt something had to be done to figure out how to program theater for my generation and those coming immediately after us. I asked myself, what do they do for entertainment? I know they do something. They don't just Netflix and chill all the time. So where do they go? I began to seek out all types of entertainment to get a better idea of what drew millennials and why. I went to rap battles, flash mobs, trivia nights, sporting events, and the list goes on. I came away with a theory that in order to get the audience that you want, you have to go where they are, look like what they already know, and then take something that they think they don't want and put it inside of something that they do. Four years ago, I was given the opportunity to put my theories to the test. What we knew about the younger generations going in was that discount ticket prices and free alcohol do not inspire repeat business. They do not plan very far ahead. <laughs> Social interaction is a priority. They want interactive experiences, and there is an assumption that they don't have any money to spend on entertainment. So, we took this information, we combined it with my theories, and we applied it to our first experiment. Go to the audience that you want, which for us was 20-somethings in a bar, look like what they already know, reality TV. So we used that to create a live reality TV play in a bar. Now, I know what you're thinking. How does that even work? We partnered with a bar, and on the night that we were there, a sign would notify bar goers that hashtag selfie the play was filming there that night. A member of my team would stand at the door and provide wristbands to anyone who did not want to be on camera, and the actors would avoid those people as they circulated the bar, interacting with bar patrons while being followed by a camera. The actors were given tasks each episode that they had to accomplish by incorporating the audience into activities, such as helping with a marriage proposal or giving advice to a character trying to figure out their love life. All interactions were filmed and edited into short webisodes that were then on our show's website for participants to see. We learned a lot of things. The first thing being that we couldn't get contact information for future communication in that environment. Also, turns out, bars are really loud. <laughs> and our audience was just a little too drunk to follow storylines. <laughs> We knew that for our next experiment, we needed a place where we could control the sound, where our audience was fully engaged, and we needed access to a pre-existing list of contact information to advertise to. The answer was an art museum. Experiment number two. Go to the audience that you want, young professionals in an art museum. Look like what they already know, paranormal reality TV. This led us to partner with a large art museum with a robust following of young professionals. And together, we created Fright Night, an interactive ghost hunter tour that guided the audience through the museum while summoning the spirits of ghosts, trying to find the evil spirit causing recent problems for museum staff. Using the museum's following on Facebook, we offered the tickets online for free and sold out within an hour. The show went so well, and we loved the experience so much that we did it again the next year, but with a few adjustments. 
we added a $15 ticket price, which reduced the no-show rate from about 20% the year before to less than 5%. The ticket price also included a light meal and a drink. We offered on-site childcare for $5 so younger parents could afford to come. And we doubled the number of performances, which also sold out, increasing participation by 100% despite the added ticket price. We learned that it is necessary to have at least a nominal cost to ensure attendance. That the higher the cost, though, the more value is expected. Parent millennials bring their kids to events, even if it is not age appropriate. <laughs> and direct marketing on social media is the key over email communications. So, four years of experimentation led us to ask this question. Could we get millennials to spend $30 to come to a production of a classic piece of literature. To get there, it was time to add in the last part of the theory. Go to the audience that you want, look like what they already know, then take something that they think that they don't want, such as 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and put it inside of something that they do, an aquarium. Experiment number three. We presented 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea as a unique opportunity to immerse yourself directly in the action as we turned an aquarium into a submarine. The audience was inducted into the Orca fleet in a thrilling, top-secret mission to infiltrate the enemy submarine Nautilus and capture Captain Nemo. The audience was a part of all of the action as they were led through the aquarium's animal exhibits, backways, hallways, and hidden spots by the actors. We learned that being mere feet away from the actors made the audience feel more engaged, like they were a part of the show and not just spectators. The higher the price point did bring a more multi-generational audience mix, but the interactive format was accessible and enjoyable across generations, creating a positive shared experience. What you might not know about the younger generations is that they are makers and doers, rather than just being viewers like previous generations. They have grown up with access to enrichment programs in the arts, sports, and technology. Their relationship to entertainment has been interactive for most, if not all, of their lives. They have been able to vote for the next American Idol and upload YouTube videos from very young ages. Even Dora the Explorer wanted their opinion. So it goes that how they experience art may be different than how their predecessors do. My goal is to build a bridge between the theater that I love and the upcoming generations. The good news is anyone can do it. I challenge you to build a bridge between where you are and the younger generations. And all you have to do is go to the audience that you want, look like what they already know, and then take something that they think they don't want and put it inside of something that they 